Hey guys, it's Sandro here, and today's video is a detail on this 1999 Series 8 Mazda RX-7. This almost 25 year old and pretty rare JDM spec RX-7 was the last in line of arguably the greatest rotary vehicles and really one of the greatest overall JDM cars coming out of the 90s motoring golden age heydays of brilliance. Now this particular 1999 RX-7 which is fair to say the owner absolutely loves and cherishes has been sitting in a shop undergoing a full engine rebuild for the past year while he's been patiently and eagerly waiting. He's finally got it back, loves the new performance power plant but would also like the pain and other certain areas to be freshened up as good as reasonably possible. We'll dive a little more into this car in its condition as the detail progresses, but it's important to note that this car has been regularly tracked in the past, so it has quite a few battle scars and has had quite a few body repairs and resprayed panels that, let's say, aren't all that great and will greatly limit what can be achieved at least from a paint correction point of view. In essence, the owner is planning on doing a full respray of the vehicle, as well as refurbishing a few other areas but he's also upfront that he may not get to that for a number of years. So he'd like the car to be a little more presentable in the meantime. The goal here with this job will be primarily giving this RX-7 the deep clean of its life. And according to the owner, it's first wash in several years, trying to give the engine bay a nice tidy up to showcase the new amazing power plant and giving the jam and wheel areas a great strip down clean. On the paint front, based on my inspection and measurements, it's really going to be about restoring and amplifying gloss and then protecting the finish, rather than chasing deeper defects that really isn't going to be possible or even appropriate based on the amount of clear coat available. This was definitely one of my more challenging jobs, but also a greatly rewarding and satisfying one that I really hope you guys enjoy. So let's get to it. first area to be tackled were the wheel wells. Now my bet is that this is the first time they've been cleaned in this manner. So we're really talking about removing a few decades of grime and tarnish, which needs a realistic mindset and goal. Basically, the goal is a great and fantastic improvement, which is certainly achievable. Right. 
I started by applying both my will and the greaser chemicals, allowed them to dwell and start breaking down the contamination and then I followed up with my Tornador air cleaning tool. In essence, this first pre-chemical treatment and cleaning stage is all about removing as much grime as possible in a safe touchless manner. Rolling. Hopefully you'll see that this was able to remove a good two thirds of the contamination safely, effectively and quite efficiently. But that last more stubborn remaining grime will need a more intensive physical clean. So reapplying my chemicals I used a variety of cleaning brushes to spot clean the entire wheel well area section by section. A few hopefully helpful points I can make here is that removing most of that initial grime in a touchless manner just makes the next physical cleaning stage so much quicker and more effective as you no longer have to fight through 100% of that contamination. But even more importantly, not rubbing all that dirt into the surfaces that acts like sandpaper is such a safer way to go. Also, around painted or more sensitive finishes, try to use softer to medium brushes and less aggression levels. But on bare metals, don't be afraid to use stiff brushes and go to town, as you're not going to hurt or damage the finish. A final tip here is that P21S polishing soap can work wonders on bare metal to remove light corrosion and surface tarnish. Now once again, perfect wasn't the goal here, but I hope you guys can see what an amazing improvement was achieved compared to where I started. I will be further enhancing and protecting the wheel wells later on, but as far as the cleaning step goes, I was pretty happy with the result. Next up was giving the wheels a clean. Now unlike the wheel wells, these rather nice and expensive EK rims are only a couple of years old. So my guess was that they shouldn't be anywhere near as much work to clean up. The outer rims do have a decent amount of gutter rash, so the owner is planning on refurbishing them down the track. But for now, they'll get a great clean and some protection in place to get them looking their best in the meantime. Now just like you saw with the wheel wells, I started by using back my tyre and wheel cleaners for an initial touchless pre-clean. Then I reapplied my chemicals and using a variety of brushes and a wash mint, I moved onto the physical cleaning stage.
There was a few more stubborn tar deposits in which I used the tar remover to dissolve and then just wipe them away. In essence, cleaning wheels off the car is pretty similar to cleaning them on the car, with the main difference being that you get better access to the whole wheel, so you can obviously achieve a better result. The trade-off is that it's certainly a lot more time-consuming process. You guys can judge for yourselves, but I think they come up great and well prepared for giving them a coating later on in this detail. So next up was giving the engine bay clean, starting with the inner bonnet. I laid down some protective mask in plastic and then began applying my chemical cleaner to start degreasing and breaking down the oily caked on film. After giving the chemicals time to work, I followed up with my Tornador air cleaning tool to once again remove as much grime as possible in a safe touchless manner. In many cases where the inner bonnet or even the engine bay itself isn't too bad, this process alone can certainly get them perfectly clean. In this case, however, I was only able to remove about two thirds of the contamination. So yet again, that final remaining grime will need a more thorough physical clean. I switched to my tar remover chemical here together with a feathered but slightly stiffer detailing brush to dissolve, lift and then rinse off the more stubborn contamination. There's always a delicate balance here that needs to be weighed, especially with inner bonnets like this that aren't clear coated and you can already see the primer underneath. Basically, you want a good cleaning result, but if you go too far, you will begin to remove what little paint the manufacturer has applied. So knowing how far you can safely go and knowing when to stop is vitally important. Next in line was the engine bay itself. I started by masking water sensitive areas such as exposed electrical connectors, the alternator and air intake. The first step was using compressed air to blow off any looser dirt, dust and particles. That was followed with a pre-chemical treatment dwell to start degreasing, loosening and lifting the contamination. Ooh. 
I then followed up with my Tornador air tool, working section by section to try and blast off as much grime as possible in a safe touchless manner. For me, engine bays is really where the Tornador shines the most. The biggest benefit which you'll see later on is that I also use it with clean water to rinse the whole engine bay down at the end with so little water making it extremely safe in avoiding any water damage. Now after the pre-clean stage it was clear that the accumulation of decades of grime in this engine bay would need more work to adequately clean it to a higher standard. So reapply my degreaser and tar remover in a few areas, I used a selection of brushes to go over the whole engine bay section by section. As I touched on before, I switched to clean water in my Tornador Reservoir and probably used a couple of hundred mils to flush and rinse the whole engine bay down. I then removed the masking tape and plastic and used blown air and a towel to remove the remaining water. The final step was turning the engine bay over to expel and evaporate the remaining moisture. I will further be dressing and protecting the engine bay later on but for now I think it was a great deep clean and result. Next up was giving all the door jams a great thorough clean.
You can lay down some towels or even apply some mask in plastic, both of which I've shown in many past videos. But overall, don't be afraid if a little water or liquid gets into the interior. It's really not an issue, just wipe it down at the end. As far as the process goes, honestly, everything you've just seen with the whole wheels and engine bay cleaning process and products used also applies here. Basically, soften and degrease the contamination with dwelling chemicals, remove as much as possible in a safe touchless manner, and then physically clean more intensively before doing a final rinse. I think the main takeaway here should be that a couple of choice tools and products together with good technique is really all you need to address so many diverse areas of car cleaning together with some time and elbow grease. How's it going for the video? I'll make you famous. <laughs> I'll make you famous. <laughs> I don't want to be famous. <laughs> Finally, onto the exterior wash and decontamination. Started by applying a tar remover on all the heavily trafficked lower panels of the vehicle, followed by an iron remover on all the upper and horizontal panels. After the chemicals were allowed to dwell for a few minutes, I then directly snow foamed my decontamination detergent over them and allowed the whole vehicle to dwell for a further 5 to 10 minutes.
With much of the surface contamination starting to soften and dissolve, the next stage was taking advantage of that by performing an extremely thorough and lengthy pressure rinse down. Basically trying to blast off as much grime as humanly possible here. It was then time for a physical hand wash. Using another acid leaning decontamination wash detergent together with a couple of microfiber wash mitts, I then gave the whole car a top to bottom intensive hand wash. The glass and a few other panels which had increased amounts of water spotting were also given additional acid treatments to help further break down those mineral deposits. Around many of the more intricate trims and panel seams, I used a combination of my degreaser and tar remover with a couple of detailing brushes to help soften and dissolve that accumulation of embedded grime.
After a quick inspection, I could still feel and even see a decent amount of fine fused particles on the surface of the vehicle that would require more attention. I used a lubricated iron and traffic film remover together with a synthetic clay towel to both chemically and mechanically remove those finer remaining particles. After a final rinse and inspection, the final steps were giving the vehicle a quick towel dry, followed by using blown air to get it ready for the next paint correction stage. There's always a few important steps needed to prepare and gather information prior to paint correction. 
The first is an IPA panel wipe used to remove any remaining moisture, detergent residue or kick back dust and dirt so that the vehicle is truly clean and bare. Next was paint measurement. Yikes. Jeez. That's no good. Oh, 225. Yeah, that's the reef spread side. Now the only original painted panels on this car were the bonnet, roof and boot lid, which were as crazy low as 50 to 60 microns, which is basically near zero clear coat thickness. Whereas all the other panels which had been repainted were all over the place, even over 200 microns in certain places, meaning they contained the original paint underneath with most likely very little clear coat on top. What this basically means that only a very light paint correction process used to further clean the paint, restore gloss and importantly remove next to no clear coat is the only reasonable option available. Inspecting the paint and trim's condition after the wash stage is really the best time to truly gauge its condition. White paint is fantastic at hiding defects, but once it gets to this badly weathered stage, there's really no hiding, it's extremely poor condition. The main defects that really stand out are quite severe swells mixed in with loads of deeper scratches, significant water etchings, varying amounts of oxidation, depending on which panel it is, lots of chemical staining and etched in dirt and grime that's really become fused to the paint. Another issue is where a few repainted panels have been poorly blended, showing distinct original and resprayed sections that really isn't correctable. Now compared to where the paint and trims were prior to the decontamination stage, the car already looks worlds better. But the biggest issue is the lack of clear coat available that, let's just say, will make this next correction stage quite interesting. Oh, the final pre-correction step was masking the plastic and rubber trims. It took a while to get here, but it was finally time for the paint correction stage. I started by doing an initial test section using my large 5 inch dual action polisher with a rather gentle intermediate foam pad and a very fine finishing primer polish. Technique wise I worked within a half meter square section using a mid machine speed with moderate pressure doing about 3 to 4 row passes before wiping down the section, removing the tape and inspecting my results with a good handheld light.
Now looking at the results, this is certainly not a high-end show car finish as there is still quite a few moderate to deeper scratches, fine pitting and mold etchings remaining. But the good news is that the vast majority of the oxidation, haze, minor swirls have been removed and the gloss and saturation has been significantly improved and actually looks extremely good. As I mentioned earlier, apart from the roof, bonnet and boot, every other panel on this car has been repainted at different times in the past. So part of this testing was also trying to see how my combination and technique would work on all those different aftermarket paint types and finishes. I performed a second test section on the front right side fender with my mini polisher using the same combination and technique. Now looking at the results, this was again a fantastic improvement in removing pretty much all the oxidation and finer swirls and with less pitting on this panel, the finish was actually even better in terms of gloss and clarity, but there was certainly a portion of more severe defects still remaining in the finish. I then switched to the front left side fender and performed another test section. This fender has some pretty dramatic chemical etchings and a little more increased pitting and haze, but it was great to see once again that the result was just a fantastic improvement. Now I'm not going to go through every test I performed, but as an overall result and conclusion, the amount of defects I was able to remove did vary a lot depending on the specific panel. For example, the front bumper was the absolute worst paint job repair and finish with high levels of body shop sanding scratches, burn marks where the base coat and primer were starting to come through, and a very different harder clear coat by comparison. The pop-up headlights and rear bumper were only slightly better but also not all that great. In a nutshell, about 75% of this car has softer Japanese OEM-like clear coat with some pretty decent and also some pretty average resprays, while 25% of the panels have a harder European style paint with very little clear coat and quite horrific finishes. As a detailer, I can't control or change the paint I've been given to work with, but what I can do is control my attitude and mindset to accept the terms at hand and do the very best I can within those restraints. So I was excited to see what could be done to get this car looking its best and determined to do it with a positive outlook. Now some of the worst defects and weathered finishes were on many of the clear plastic lights and reflectors that were in desperate need of a little correction work. And just like the white paint, they too had thin clear coats that in some areas were beginning to fade and fail. So I used the very same light combination and technique to remove oxidation, staining and haze and restore the gloss and saturation back into their finishes.
Yeah, that, that, that looks amazing, yeah. You can polish that out. It's completely different. Car glass was another area I felt needed a little attention to remove some water spotting, etched in stains and dullness in order to bring back its clarity and reflective quality. So all the glass was given a nice thorough polish with the very same combination to deep clean its surface and restore its finish. and not really uh, do a lot of filming. That's all right. I'll just get some shots as you sort of... Yeah, yeah, any time, going. man. Come down. All right, I'm rolling, Sandra. Go for it. One thing to mention here is that when you're faced with super thin clear coat, it is in a way easy as it limits what you can pursue safely. So using anything but a gentle foam pad and fine polishing abrasive with a light handed technique is pretty much off the table. It's also easy in the way that you can turn your attention away from addressing severe defects and really just focus in on eliminating minor defects and amplifying gloss, saturation and clarity. Now the hard part is that when you truly care about wanting and pursuing the very best result, it's quite easy to listen to that voice in your head that wants to disregard the risk and go just a little further to obtain a better outcome. This is where past experience that's honestly obtained through past failures comes into play. I've certainly burnt through clear coat a number of times in the past. It's just a gut wrenching feeling, but it teaches you a valuable lesson. I think that's a big part where things more recently seem to be going a little pear shaped. Past experience and events in our lives and even in broad history, good or bad, need to be remembered and learnt from. That doesn't mean you dwell on failures and lash out or let them eat you up inside. And it also doesn't mean that you glorify human achievements into some horrible prideful worship. It just means you take note of what happened and let past experience steer you in the right direction. Trying to wipe away or even worse, alter the facts of our past to fit some sort of self-fulfilling narrative is absolutely destructive behavior that can only result in repeating past failures and even surpassing them.
Next up was enhancing and protecting the inner wheel wells. I started by using an IPA based cleaner to remove any chemical residue, dust and remaining grease or oils. I then used Shine Supply Classy Chassis with a foam applicator and spent a good 5-10 to 10 minutes thoroughly massaging it all over the rubber, plastic, metal and painted materials. I allowed it to sit for an hour in order to penetrate and bond to the surface and then used a microfiber towel to remove the excess and knock back that glossy finish to a nice satin sheen. The rust on the brake rotors was removed a little later on by simply driving the car back and forth a few times to shave it off and then easily blown away with some compressed air. It's actually been a while since I've used Classy Chassis but I think it was the absolute perfect choice here. It just does such a great job at adding saturation and richness to the wheel wells and also seems to recondition the materials, protect well and last quite a while. Next in line was ceramic coating the wheels. Once again I started with an IPA wipe down to remove any residue, dust or oils. Using a foam hand applicator I applied the wheel coating thoroughly over the entire wheel face working it in for a good minute or two just being sure to go over every section several times. After a couple of minutes to allow the coating to bond and flash to the surface I used a primary microfiber towel to firstly gather up the majority of the excess coating and then a second towel with some good lighting to buff the finish streak free. The very same process was then repeated for the inner barrel of the wheel and about an hour later after completing all four wheels a second coat was applied to all of them. After all four wheels were given more time to further cure, the tyres were then dressed and sealed and the wheels were placed back onto the vehicle. I think the wheels just looked so much more vibrant and sharper and placing them into the wheel wells that certainly looked deeper and richer, it really was such a nice overall improvement well worth the effort in my opinion.
it was then time to dress and enhance the engine bay. Yet again, the primary step here was an IPA wipe down to ensure that no remaining residue or oils would prevent the dressing from bonding as good as possible. Capra Pearl was my dressing of choice here, as in my experience, it has a fantastic ability to add richness, restore the finish and protect the materials moving forward. It was applied to a foam applicator and section by section was massaged all over the rubbers, plastic, metals and even painted surfaces. About an hour later, I then followed up with a microfiber towel to gather up any excess dressing and knock the finish down from a glossier to a more satin sheen finish. As is the moral of this job, perfection wasn't the goal or outcome here. But I do think the engine bay looked so much cleaner, more saturated and crisp by the end. So for me, it was a win to see a new lease of life on the heart of this car. The final stage of this detail was protecting the exterior paint and trims with a ceramic coating. Out of all the coatings I've used or even tried in my time, which is certainly a lot, Sequence UK is still my absolute favourite to apply because their user experience is just so nice, hassle-free and rewarding. Now for someone like me that's been applying ceramic coatings for about a decade, it's a nice break from the more professional based coatings that do require more stringent applications, concentration, labour and time. And C Quartz UK is still such an amazing looking coating with great performance, durability, and comes in at a very affordable price point. Now, as far as the application goes, I applied it to about a square meter section at a time using horizontal and vertical overlapping lines, doing three row passes in each section. Within a couple of minutes, I could see the rainbow streaking, which indicates flashing, or in other words, it just means the coating is bonding and etching to the surface. And shortly after that, I used a first cloth to gather up the majority of the excess coating and a second cloth to buff the finish streak free. But what makes C Quartz UK so much easier and quicker to use 
is that you can wipe it off once you see the rainbow streaking or really leave it on for another five to 10 minutes and it will still wipe away just as easy even if your timing is a little off. In other words, it's just so forgiving and hard to get wrong and the wipe off experience itself is just so seamless and pleasurable. Thank you. I guess something else to mention here is that Carpro Essence, which I use to polish the paint, not only removes minor defects, but also fills many of them in, and furthermore, it boosts the finish with a protective sealant. Basically, that's what a good all-in-one polish should do. But with Essence being an all-in-one primer polish, it also means that after a few hours, you can apply a ceramic coating over it, which is basically what the primer part in this polish means. So on a car like this that has so little clear coat, a fine primer polish will remove next to no clear coat, yet be able to restore much of the paint's finish with added filling and sealing capabilities. And then a ceramic coating on top will take it even further in filling in more of the defects and amplifying the gloss and saturation to another level. In other words, when faced with similar restraints of badly weathered paint with extremely low clear coat levels, this is perhaps the best way forward and really representative of what is realistically achievable. Perfect, certainly not, but a substantial improvement I'd like to think that was achieved. So let's wrap up this video. What made a car in this condition so extremely challenging is the fact that there was significant levels of contamination and defects, yet so little paint or clear cut throughout, that no longer made this job about having the drive, ability and dedication to clean, correct and restore its condition. It increasingly became about having the knowledge, restraint and experience, which in large part is gained by many failures in the past, to make good calls on how far you can go before you've gone too far and made things even worse. Thankfully, I do think I found that balance. I think the hard part about taking a week plus long process and then trying to compact it into an hour long video is that you're simply limited in capturing certain moments and aspects while others are never seen. In some ways, that's the advantage of editing a video. You can trim off the fluff and less eventful or at least seemingly important moments, but there's also something lost in that process. Maybe it's a real beauty that just can't be captured or replicated on film. Perhaps it's the unique human experience that requires physical participation in the moment where you can touch, smell, taste, and even more so influence the outcome rather than just watching and listening to a summarized version of that moment in history. I know this is going a little off topic, but I guess the thought that entered my mind while wrapping up this video is that, well, firstly, I do love making and sharing these videos. It's an opportunity I've been blessed with and certainly don't take for granted, but it's also not the real world. I can try and put out the most informative, entertaining and well-presented video within my skill set, but it won't replace being there and what that experience truly reveals and entails. That's just a uniquely in-person human experience that no technology will ever replace. 
this detail was never meant to be about producing some magnificent show car finish. It was all about doing the best you can with what you have to work with. I think that really sums up this job. I can also tell you that the owner was extremely happy with the result and I do hope that the time invested in filming and producing this video was also enjoyable and helpful to some of you out there. I think I'll leave it there guys and if you enjoyed this video and would like to say thanks and help support future content, you can do so by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash ccad in which I'll have a link to in the description box or you can now hit the thanks button below the video and thank you everyone for the support so far. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed and found this video helpful. Please share it with others, give it a like and comment below to show your support for this content and I'll see you guys soon. say a massive thank you to Sandro. Uh, my car looks amazing. Um, it's never looked this good in the five plus years of ownership, you know. Yeah, just it looks amazing. It looks like it's been resprayed. So thank you very much, Sandro. You've done a fantastic job, mate.